Dunlop Falls presents the new Vandermeer Ball Feeding Frenzy. With Dennis Vandermeer, Urban Sobald, and Herbert Schnabelt. Dunlop is the official ball of the USPTR and Vandermeer Tennis University. Hello, I'm Dennis Vandermeer. Now, more than ever before, it's important to be a good ball feeder. If you're a tennis teacher in any capacity, you must be able to feed the ball in such a way that beginners can learn to play from you, intermediates, and you must be able to challenge advanced players. In the Vandermeer Ball Feeding Frenzy, we introduced many, many of the concepts to be a good ball feeder. In this new and revised edition, we're going to show you even more advanced ball feeding skills. And we'll show you some drills you've never seen before. Let the ball feeding frenzy begin. There are many ways to feed the ball. For instance, there's Bruce the breakdancer, who puts his body and soul into feeding. Of course, sometimes he puts too much of his body into it. Here's a machine gun Mike. He's the fastest and most frenetic feeder in the West. Now, he doesn't care where the ball goes, as long as the students hit a volume of balls. Perfect. Here is Too Cool Kevin. He's the tennis director, and he's standing in for the teaching pro today. He is doing his students a favor. He is bored, man. He couldn't care less. And he lets his students know it. He'd much rather be home watching TV. Then there's Tom the technician. He lets his playmate ball machine do all the work while he relaxes and feeds his dog Spot. If you don't have a bionic hand, you'd better learn how to feed. Dennis explains. Learning how to feed the ball is one of the most essential skills for a tennis professional. You have to be able to feed the ball very accurately to feed a beginner who is just learning the stroke. You have to be able to feed the ball accurately from side to side, perhaps, so the student can learn footwork patterns. You have to learn to feed the ball so the player can practice, consistent practice for a stroke. You have to learn to feed slices and topspins to, to challenge your students. And you should be able to learn to feed the ball to set up tactical situations. All those things are essential feeding techniques. So to become a first-rate tennis pro, you need really to become a first-rate feeder. Turn, racket back and down. One, two, three, point of contact. And now make follow through. Right. And now, perfect feed and follow through. Right. And now this time, judge the ball. Turn, racket back and down, and judge the ball. Right. Okay. Right. And run around the ball. Right. And run around the ball. Okay. Now go to the baseline. Hit the ball down the line. Run over to the ball. Right, come back again. And come over to the ball. Right, shuffle back. And now this time, run wide and then uh, run back. Okay, so run wide, run back. Right, and run wide. Top spin. Right, and top spin. To feed an exaggerated top spin, hold a semi-western grip and bring your racket across your body from right to left. I want you to, to read short ball, okay? And run. Right. And run. To hit an exaggerated underspin, Chop sharply down from behind the ball. Now combination, forehand, backhand, topspin, anything. Okay, topspin. Slice. Right, topspin. To hit an exaggerated backhand side spin, bring your racket sharply across your body from your left to your right. This will make the ball bounce very sharply to the player's forehand. To play an exaggerated forehand side spin, bring the racket sharply across your body from right to left. 
and this will make the ball bounce sharply to the backhand side. Backhand down the line, and now, uh, and set up, and Lonnie shot beautiful, one more time. And backhand down the line, right, and set up, and winning body. Let's review, feed for accuracy, feed for practice, feed to challenge, and feed for tactical situations. And now here's a feeding tip. To save your arm while you're feeding, string your racket looser than your normal playing racket. Don't use a Western or semi-Western grip when you feed the ball, because you will feed the ball in an uncontrolled manner. Rather, use the continental grip. This grip aligns the racket far better with your arm and with the ball, and it'll give you a much more controlled feed. It will also be a lot less strenuous on your arm. Don't use a full swing because you will have too much racket head speed. Instead, tuck your elbow in, reduce your backswing and your follow through, and you will have a much more controlled feed. The typical pro feeding stance of facing the net is very strenuous on your back and is a no-no if you want to stay healthy. The pro stance would be to stand sideways with your weight on your front foot. First learn to feed the ball with a shortened grip and practice feeding toward targets on the other side of the court. Now practice feeding the ball, holding the racket full length. Instead of hitting a ball out of your hand, practice feeding a ball that is first bounced on the ground. Again, first a short grip, then full length. Practice feeding topspin by letting the ball bounce on the ground and finish with the racket behind your head. For more topspin, hit the ball out of your hand and bring your forearm and wrist sharply across your body from right to left. Also, practice feeding underspin balls. Practice feeding depth and direction. First, toward a target. Then, with a real student, deep to the forehand, next to the midcourt, and short to the backhand. Let's review the essentials of feeding. Use a short grip, use a long grip, feed with a bounce, feed without a bounce, and feed spins, directions, and depth. Single rhythm feeding is very inefficient in a group situation. There just aren't enough balls being fed for the students to learn the stroke. By contrast, double rhythm feeding is 100% more efficient. It is almost the same as if two balls are being fed at the same time. How to practice double rhythm feeding. Practice grabbing two or more balls out of the ball basket at a time.
practice against a fence. It reduces the tedium of collecting the balls. And now here's a tip. Practice not to look as you grab the balls out of the basket. Now, practice across the net. Feed the ball with the double rhythm method to develop the timing for this feeding technique. First practice toward targets, then with students. Also, practice feeding with topspin and also with slice. Now let's practice the one-two rhythm. Now feed the ball down the line, hesitate, then feed the next ball. Now in a drill situation, you can feed down the middle, cross court, and down the middle, cross court. Ground strokes. Forehands and backhands. And now ground strokes followed by a volley. And the ultimate feed is the volley volley. You must learn the live ball volley volley rhythm. Dennis explained. Now, this is a little skill that every tennis pro must have. You must be able to handle the ball uh, volley volley, forehand to backhand, backhand to forehand, and you don't have to be a very experienced player to learn to do this. We'll show you how through a series of standard little progressions, anybody can learn these ball handling skills. For the first step, bounce the ball on your racket and catch it. Bounce it on your racket and catch it. Have your partner hit the ball to you, bounce it on your racket, and then hit it. Hit, bounce, catch. Hit, bounce, catch. For the third one, hit, bounce, bounce, hit. Hit, bounce, bounce, hit. And finally, a regular volley. Forehand volleys. Backhand volleys. So the progressions are bounce, catch, hit, bounce, catch, hit, bounce, bounce, hit, and volley. Once you can volley back and forth, you can feed live balls, which is the real rhythm of tennis. Forehand volley and backhand volley. Forehand volley, overhead smash. Hey, what's Spot doing here? For feeding return of serve, here is an important tip. If you start from the service line and choke up on your racket, you will find it much less strenuous on your arm. You must be able to feed top spins and your racket goes from left to right as you hit up on the ball. You should also learn to feed slice serves. The ball toss should be a bit more to the right. And the racket should finish more to the left hand side. You should also learn to simulate a left-hander's top spin serve. You have to learn how to serve a reverse twist.
a reverse twist is when the racket moves from your right across your body to your left. And now let's review. Choke your racket, feed from the service line, also feed topspin, feed slice, and feed reverse twist. To feed for the return of a serve in a group situation, choke your racket and use an abbreviated backswing. Now with your double rhythm feeding skill, your students can return serve, approach the net, and volley. Now you should learn an easy way to feed a drop shot. A tip, hold the racket like a frying pan. Bump the ball lightly in front of the net so it just bounces over the net. Now, using the same technique, bump the ball harder on the ground so the ball will bounce higher and your students can practice put away shots. Now your students can practice combinations, easy bumps for drop shots and hard bumps for putaways. Dennis explains the three live ball rhythms. In a live ball drill, there are of course three rhythms. The first one is a live ball drill, ground stroke to ground stroke. Then there is a rhythm, ground stroke to volley. That's a faster rhythm. And then the fastest of all the rhythms is volley to volley. And of course, a tennis pro must be adept at feeding all three of these three rhythms. Ground stroke to ground stroke rhythm. All right, now comes the net, and I, you'll do the volley rhythm. That's it. All right, you are volleying now, okay? All right, now back end to back end. Here's a tip for controlled live ball feeding. Keep a firm wrist and an abbreviated backswing. As a tennis pro, you need to generate pace when you feed the ball, but the most important thing you need is touch. You need to be able to play with a player with the least amount of skill. And I'll show you a few exercises that you could go through to develop the skill. The first one is to be able to eat the ball so gently that you can actually make a net court. Now watch and I'll show you what I'm talking about. The As a tennis pro, you should be so accurate. Your student, but you teach perhaps a little kid but has no attention on what, what you're trying to accomplish. They may, their concentration may wander. And you don't care, you just keep feeding the ball. If they decide to have a nap in between, that's okay. They have success in hitting the ball. If there's a mistake, it's the pro's fault. In tennis, the one that your students will enjoy most, and also has a value because you will be able to save more balls and keep the ball in play, is if you can snag the ball out of the air. Now let me show you what that stroke looks like. In a rally, suddenly comes the ball and I snag the ball out of the air. Now if you can learn that skill, it has a lot of benefits. The students will think you're a fantastic player They'll admire your skill with the ball and trust you more fully when you teach them. The first thing is the grip. 
Now, instead of a normal grip, a forehand grip, you hold an extreme grip, uh, almost like holding a frying pan, extreme, extreme backhand grip, uh, frying pan grip. Now, for you career people who don't know how to use a frying pan, you think of holding it like a credit card. I imagine you have a credit card and you give your credit card and say, here's my card. Now, the same thing, just imagine it's like a credit card. And that will be your, your way of understanding the grip. Now, once you've got the grip, then it's very easy because now all you do is you add the ball to it. And now look what I do with the ball. I put the ball on my racket and all I do is lift the racket up and bring it down towards the ground. Lift it up and bring it down. The next step, I toss the ball up. I catch it and then bring it down. And the final step, I toss it up and just kind of keep this hand close to, to the, uh, the racket as it will support system. No. And now with my practice partner, we throw the ball back and forth very gently. And I catch it. This very special shot you would teach to the president or somebody who's very highly placed in the government. So they can use this shot on match point. So this is what it looked like, you see. You would rally the ball and they're allowed to use a special touch. Known as the presidential touch. Here are the progressions for how to snag the ball and make the presidential shot. Toss and self catch on racket, toss and catch back and forth, and hit and catch back and forth. Here are some of the newest drills we've added to the repertoire of drills that every tennis pro should have. These drills are presented by Herbert Snaubert, the United States Professional Tennis Registry Director in Germany.
Here is a selection of tennis ball feeding drills that every tennis teacher should know.